Hello everybody, welcome back to Ordinary Adventures and welcome back to Disney's Animal Kingdom, my favorite park at Walt Disney World. And today we're gonna to be trying some of the best food at this park, many of which we have never had before. And we're gonna just have some fun. So why don't you come with us on, on this, this adventure? adventure. because I was trying to take a photo of her and she came over and was like had all her vines like wrapped all over me and it was like so cool ah, I love it I'm already having the best day ever when we just got here I feel like many people rush through this entryway trying to get to the rides and stuff but you miss like so many fun animals over here I just want to sleep and all these people keep looking at me. Yeah, he must have had a late night at Disney Springs like the rest of us. <laughs> the question is, how many animals are hidden on the Tree of Life? If you know, let us know in the comments below. Because I don't know. We're just standing here admiring the Tree of Life and I noticed that there's a ringtail lemur right over here. How have I never noticed this before? They're right up at the front of the park. In case you guys didn't know, before we started doing YouTube, I actually worked with lemurs and I took care of them. I took care of like, 12 lemurs? Maybe more than that, I forget. So many, but it's so cool seeing them here. Stop the Flame Tree Barbecue, and this is a barbecue restaurant. All the food is supposedly good, but the thing that everybody says to get is the baked macaroni and cheese with pulled pork. This is baked macaroni and cheese topped with smoked pulled pork, onion rings, and coleslaw. It has the signature Flame Tree Barbecue barbecue sauce. This looks amazing. So you got those onion rings, you got the pulled pork, you got oh, the baked mac and cheese. Oh my God, that mac and cheese. Looks good. The pulled pork is so tender. The barbecue sauce is just sweet and tangy. Usually I don't like coleslaw and stuff, but this adds to the flavor quite a bit. The mac and cheese is so cheesy. Look at that cheese pull. Oh Look my at God. that. Five out of five, Peters. I don't know how we haven't had this before. We had mac and cheese from a cart somewhere, but we never went to Flame Tree Barbecue and we were making a mistake. Ordinary Adventure Star contender. I mean, was there any question? Come on. This is a great way to start our day. I was hungry. While this wasn't on our list from our research, when we saw it, we had to get it. It is the Rotten Apple. It's Angry Orchard Crisp Apple Hard Cider with Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey over ice garnished with gummy worms. The gummy worms were on top, but they've since sunk to the bottom. You can see a little wormy down there. <laughs> I love Fireball and I love Hard Cider. I might even be a connoisseur of each of those things. <laughs> Let's try this. It's good, but to be honest with you, I can't even really taste the cinnamon whiskey. It just tastes like Angry Orchard, but Angry Orchard is good as is. So I'll give it a four out of five, Peters. Not only is this park beautiful, but it has these quiet, serene spots to eat the food and just watch some of the local Florida wildlife. Uh, I love it. Always amaze me seeing Kevin walking around Animal Kingdom. A lot of people from Walt Disney World complain that there's not that many characters out, like compared to Disneyland. But you guys got Kevin. You guys got a full life-size Kevin in Animal Kingdom. How awesome! Kevin, 
over in Asia, there's a booth called Mr. Kamal's. We've all often overlooked this booth because it has like french fries, but everybody says you have to get these french fries. They're Mr. Kamal's seasoned french fries. They're served with a curried honey mustard and a Korean chili ketchup. So they're not just your average fries. As you can see here, here they have a seasoning all over them, but not spicy. Let's try some of the sauces. The fries are good. But I think what the elevates this is the sauces. The Korean chili ketchup is just a little bit spicy. And then the curried honey mustard is my favorite. It's, it's more sweet than spicy. Five out of five, Peters. I feel like this is a must get every time you're at Animal Kingdom. Also at Mr. Kamal's, we saw that they had chicken dumplings with a ponzu dipping sauce. This is another thing that everybody says is like a must get when you come to Animal Kingdom. So we thought, why not? Let's try them. They look like really crispy. These are really good, super flavorful. That sauce just adds to it. And I love that they're like nice and soft on the inside, but then super crispy on the outside. It's a shame they only give you three. I could eat like at least three dozen of these. The sauce is kind of like a sweet soy sauce. I don't know, I don't really know how to describe ponzu sauce, but it's really good. These probably get like, they don't quite get a five for me, but I'm gonna give them like a four, a four out of five. I can see myself getting these again. Peter pro tip, what I like to do with dumplings is bite off a little bit of the end. That way when you dip it into the sauce, the meat gets marinated in the sauce. It's spring break, it's crazy busy, there's lines everywhere, so we decided to come check out the bird show. I love shows like that. That's why Animal Actors was always one of my favorite things to do at Universal Studios, because I just enjoy sitting there and seeing all these beautiful creatures up close. I did, however, think this was gonna be like up inspired and I thought Doug and Russell were gonna come out, but- I think they did a version of that and then people didn't like it, so they oh, removed that. Okay, well, I was waiting for them the whole time and they never showed up, but it was still nice. Yeah, one of the birds came like dangerously close to us. Yeah, really close to us. And we didn't get pooped on, so I feel like that's a win-win. Whenever I go to these type of shows, I always am like, I'm gonna be the one person to get pooped on. But we didn't get pooped on, so that's a positive. Right next to Mr. Kamal's, there's this place called Caravan Road, and they have what is called a kakigori. This is a Japanese shaved ice dessert flavored with watermelon and condensed milk. It looks so pretty. We were just walking by and randomly I was like, I wanna try that. And I thought it was pretty cool when I ordered this, they asked if I wanted to spend a dollar to donate to the baby elephant fund. And I said yes. Always say yes when they ask you. We want to save the baby elephants. I can already tell by looking at this that this is not on the same level as the shaved ice that we got in Hawaii. Feels like it's kind of like rock solid. Probably because in Florida it gets so hot here that it like just instantly melts. You could add like a shot of vodka to this if you wanted to for like an extra like 10 bucks or something. Didn't do that this time, but I love that the option's there. It's a nice like treat on a hot day and it's like relatively cheap and you could save the baby elephants. Come on. And I even got a straw because like look how much it's melting already. It's like a shaved ice soup. If you look at any list of the best food items at Animal Kingdom, you'll come across this corn on the cob from Harambe Fruit Market. This is the corn on the cob, nicely buttered. It's the African spices that are what is special. It's not like spicy. It just has like a nice flavor to it. Almost like, like a like pepper and cinnamon and cayenne and a bunch of like those kind of spices. This is really good and you can see why it's on every list. I'd give this a five out of five, Peters. And also we, we learned from Bethany Vinton on TikTok that you should ask for extra African spices. I double agree with that one. This is good, get this.
truck that Mickey drives around in the safari with? Oh yeah, I think so, huh? Safari collectible figurines. Does Pluto live on top of that palm tree? There's also safari binoculars. This is actually brilliant. If I was a kid, I would totally want these to go on the safari. As an adult, I kind of want these to go on the safari. And with that, we're gonna go to the one must-do ride every time we're at Animal Kingdom. No, it's not Everest. No, no it's not Pandora. It's the safari. Kilimanjaro <laughs> safaris. Kilimanjaro Safaris is probably one of my favorite rides of all time. Me too. Every time we come to Animal Kingdom, we have to go on it. I love the giraffes. I love seeing the giraffes. What about you? I love seeing the lion, and he was just like eating like a big cat. It was a female, I think, actually. She was just eating. She was just eating. Looking at these monkeys is reminding me once again when I worked with lemurs. You build this extravagant like habitat for them and they just want to hang out like up top, not play with any of the stuff in their, their environment. It's so funny. What is going on there? What are they doing? I think they're having an intimate moment. We should probably move along. the hippo. Hippos are my favorite animal, fun fact. They're one of them. Top five. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, there's blood! Oh, there's blood! Oh my goodness. There's just a hippo. Look at him. Oh, my word. Oh my god. He's cute. Look at his little feet. Look at his little birds. Look at his little tail. It's funny because when we were on the safari, we went by the hippos and we didn't see anything. But in there we got <laughs> up close and personal. We saw some hippo butt. Yeah, pro tip if you don't see some animals on the safari, there's tons of nature trails in Animal Kingdom. The one that we're on right now is called Gorilla Falls. There's a lot of good animals besides gorillas. Was Emma born here? Uh, yes. Yeah, all the kids were born here. <laughs> I'm so glad we came over here because we were gonna go get some more food, but we were like, oh, let's go through the gorilla track. Who knows what we'll see? And we saw like a baby gorilla. Yeah, we saw a whole family. We saw like a teenager, like mom and pop, probably grandma and grandpa. So cute. One of our favorite little snack shacks here in Animal Kingdom is called Tamu Tamu. It's in the Africa area, and it's where you can find the boozy Dole Whip. So we discovered this on one of our first trips here to Animal Kingdom, and ever since, we've been obsessed. We are walking by, and I noticed that they had a new menu item. It's called Scar's Lair. It's a Dole Whip with green apple. You can also, if you want to, add some rum to this, but I just got the Dole Whip with the green apple. I'm not gonna lie, at first I thought it was a green apple Dole Whip, like a sour green apple Dole Whip, and I was like, what? But I think it's just like a syrup. It's just like the Dole Whip that you know and love, but then it has like that sour, sour green apple taste to it at the very end. I think this might be something for like the, the 50th anniversary, so I'm not sure how long this is gonna be on the menu, but if you like Dole Whip and you like sour apple, I would recommend trying this before it's gone. I give it a five out of five. I mean, come on, it's a dull one. One of the things I appreciate about Animal Kingdom and Epcot is their circular parks. So you see the park's icon from everywhere. And you get like great views of either the Tree of Life or Spaceship Earth, no matter where you are in the park. 
It doesn't happen at like you know, Disneyland or Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios. I love that when you get closer to the Yeti Shrine, Everest slowly disappears in the background. Next up, we're gonna go to Dinoland USA, where they have a snack place we've never eaten at. It's called Trilobites. And if you don't know what a trilobite is, it's an aquatic dinosaur that has been extinct for many years. But over at that stand, they have the buffalo chicken chips. These are house-made chips served with buffalo chicken, blue cheese dressing, topped with tomato and celery relish. Now's about the time of the day that we start like comparing ourselves to like the meals that we had earlier today. This is no flame tree barbecue mac and cheese. I love buffalo chicken. The spice level on these is a little tame, but it's just enough for me at a theme park. And these house-made chips are perfectly cooked. The relish on top goes so perfectly with it. Even though this isn't a flame tree barbecue mac and cheese, I'd still give us a five out of five here. Really? Yeah. Wow. You want to try some? I think we finally hit the point in our Florida vacation where I'm overheated and I'm tired. My feet hurt, my body hurts, my, I'm, I busted out the fans, got the water. I'm trying to pull through, but I want to try some of these five out of five chips here. These are actually pretty good, despite what they look like. I feel like these house-made chips are like the selling point for me. If the chips like weren't good, I don't think this would be good. But I'm, I don't think it quite gets a five. I'm gonna give it like a four. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm hot. We're just walking by this old lady and she very loudly was like, you would think that all Disney parks would have princess stuff and there's none here. She was so mad. She must have not made it to Pandora or else she would have seen Neytiri or Jake Sully. See, I know the characters' names. Speaking of Pandora, we've been at Animal Kingdom all day and we haven't been to Pandora yet, so I think we should go over there. Let's go. <laughs> Just asked Peter if he wanted to do this with me and he said no. Why don't you want to do that with me, Peter? Could have got one with Pixel and Gizmo in it. I know, next time. What's the first thing we gotta do once we get into <laughs> Pandora, the world of Avatar? What? We gotta rub the plant. What's it called? I forget. We gotta rub the plant. Didn't work. Luckily I have footage of when we were here for Epcot's 40th that I could put in right now and we did rub it and it did work. We gotta rub it. Nick's never done it before. You think it's an obvi I would have done this. Yeah, so I think you rub it or something. <laughs> oh, look at it glowing. Oh, it's oh. starting. Oh. Oh. Nobby! Did we get a stowaway on our trip to Pandora? <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this plant is called the Falaska Reclinita. I probably said that correctly, 100% correctly. No, you definitely did not. That is the plant. When you rub it, it helps detoxify the environment and lets us breathe okay. on Pandora. So if it's not working... Yeah, we, oh. we only have a few more, a few more minutes to live. Honey? 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 Quick, we need to turn him into an avatar. We've only been here like a handful of times since this land opened and there's still things that I'm noticing. Like over here, there's an earth vehicle of some kind that has been here for decades. It looks like decades. For me, Pandora is like Galaxy's Edge in the way that it rewards multiple visits. You see new things every single time you're here. It's all in the little details. Next up, we're going to Satuli Canteen, which is the main dining room here in Pandora. And this used to be the mess hall operated by the RDA. It's been abandoned for many years. And of course, the Alpha Centauri Expeditions have come in and turned it into a restaurant for us Earth folk visiting. It's cool, on display they have some of the Navi tools, including the spears that they use to kill stuff. Even this mixing bowl that looks very impractical, if you ask me. The funniest thing is this picture on the wall showing some of the people from this company, and you might recognize some familiar faces. There is Joe Rohde, a Walt Disney Imagineer, and the producer of Avatar, John Landau. 
inside of Setuli Canteen, you can find like a space version of Chipotle bowls. You basically pick your meat, pick your toppings, pick your sauce, and they're really good. We haven't been here in quite some time, but the thing that I'm getting today is actually the cheeseburger steamed pods bao buns. This is steamed cheeseburger pod stuffed with ground beef, ketchup, mustard, pickle, cheddar cheese with crunchy vegetable slaw and vegetable chips. The other day when we were at Magic Kingdom, we tried the cheeseburger spring rolls and I became obsessed with them. So I'm wondering if these are just as good. So I'm pretty sure the filling inside of this is almost identical to those spring rolls in the Magic Kingdom, except this is a soft bao bun and in the Magic Kingdom it was a crunchy spring roll. This is really, really good. I think this was something that was on the kids menu at one point and then it became so popular that it, they made it, adults could order it too. I'm giving these a five. These are good. Next up, we're gonna go next door to Pangu Pangu. This is another reclaimed location. I like how everything in this land is like reclaimed from the Avatar Wars. And we're gonna get a classic here in Pandora. It's called the Night Blossom. This has layers of apple and desert pear limeade topped with boba balls. And they also have a rum version of this called the Rum Blossom, but I just got the, the classic today. We've had this many times before. It's a great combination of sweet and sour. They put the boba balls on top to make it look more alien-like. My only complaint is that it doesn't put them on the bottom so you don't suck them up, but five out of five Peters. This is, again, an Animal Kingdom classic. It can't get anything other than... Unfortunately, we didn't have time today to go to Nomad Lounge. It's one of our favorite places to eat in Animal Kingdom. Yeah, we're gonna have to go back for sure. But if you wanna see our video from Magic Kingdom of the best foods, put it right over there. I wanna say thank you to some of our Patreons, that includes. Bailey, Agent Cooper, and B. Jordan. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.